Let's talk about type A and type B cells of the kidney and their function to regulate blood pH. An important way kidneys help balance blood pH is by secreting hydrogen ions and reabsorbing bicarbonate ions when the blood gets too acidic, or by secreting bicarbonate ions and reabsorbing hydrogen ions when the blood gets too basic. In the collecting ducts of the nephrons, there are two types of cells involved in regulating acid-base balance designated as type A and type B intercalated cells. The type A intercalated cells are able to secrete hydrogen ions while reabsorbing bicarbonate ions back into the blood, causing the blood to become more basic. Notice how the channels for the type B cells do just the opposite as the A cells. They reabsorb hydrogen ions while secreting bicarbonate ions. These actions cause the blood to become more acidic. Comparing type A and type B cells side by side, notice again the difference in the location of carriers that transport the various ions across the membranes. The pH of the blood determines which type of cell is active in conditions of acidosis, the type A cells that secrete hydrogen ions into the lumen of the nephron are active to cause the blood to become more basic. While in conditions of alkalosis, the type B cells that secrete bicarbonate ion into the nephron are active to cause the blood to become more acidic. These actions help bring the blood pH back to normal range. And notice that as hydrogen ions move across the membrane, potassium ions are moving the opposite direction. For this reason, acid-base imbalances can disrupt normal potassium concentrations in the blood. Acidosis can bring about hyperkalemia, which is too much potassium in the blood. Remember, with acidosis, the type A cells are more active, and type A cells reabsorb potassium, increasing it in the blood. Alkalosis, on the other hand, can bring about hypokalemia, which is too little potassium in the blood because the type B cells will be active, and they cause secretion of potassium. Both hyper and hypokalemia can lead to tragic consequences due to their effect on membrane potentials. If potassium levels get out of normal range, the resting membrane potential, or RMP, of excitable cells like neurons and muscle cells can be affected. High blood potassium levels is called hyperkalemia. Emia means in the blood. Blood levels correspond to concentrations in the extracellular fluid, or ECF, which is the fluid around the cells. Before the hyperkalemia, we had normal levels of potassium in the ECF. Now with hyperkalemia, ECF concentrations of potassium are higher. When potassium levels are higher in the ECF, due to hyperkalemia, does this increase or decrease the potential for potassium to leave the cell through the potassium leak channels. With hyperkalemia, the concentration difference between the inside and outside of the cell has decreased, so potassium doesn't want to leave as much. Decreasing the potential for a positive ion to leave will depolarize the cell. Hyperkalemia will cause electrically excitable cells like cardiac cells to be more depolarized, leading to cardiac arrhythmias. What about hypokalemia? This would mean lower levels of potassium in the ECF. This lower potassium would increase the concentration difference between the inside and outside of the cell, so potassium would want to go out more. How would a positively charged ion like potassium leaving the cell affect the resting membrane potential? Greater potential for potassium to leave would cause hyperpolarization. It is important that hydrogen ions secreted by the type A cells are buffered in the urine. This is accomplished by phosphate or ammonia buffer systems. They get rid of some of the hydrogen ions to prevent the pH of the urine from becoming too low, which could damage the cells of the kidney. Now for review questions. Pause the video and consider your answers. If you chose the following, you are correct.
Thanks for watching.